me the other day, your ad has intrigued her because you were kind of basically asking for her back, which is something she doesn't feel some of the other candidates are doing. What kind of, you know, uh, what are you hearing about your job interview as a long standing girl? You know, us politicians, we take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not that important. We sort of are, but it's up to you. And you know, Iowa, you guys are the first caucus prime. You will have a major impact in selecting the next president. And what I'm saying with those ads is, first, look, let's not take all of this so seriously. Secondly, I hate negative ads. I don't like the tax. <laughs> something to sort of jump out. You know, because when I started doing the ads, I was below the margin of error. <laughs> and so I needed you to know that, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm moving up 10%, 11%. You know, we're the only candidate that's moving up. We're, we still got a ways to go. But uh, the, the point of the ads was, let's make a decision. You want this. I mean, what you want is you want to see, I was told that every item, each one of them, you want to meet every presidential candidate seven times. <laughs> and after the seventh time, you'll make a decision. So I'm excited about my second decision. And, and so I want you to make the decision, and I hope you do. It's your choice. But the decision should be made on who can bring this country together. Who who can bridge the huge divisions we have because of Iraq and immigration, the middle class that is really straining, you know, groups like these, the ARP, that are simply asking for a safety net for social security and higher wages to this country, for the middle class of this country, that the decision be based on what are your plans for the country? What, what's your experience? That, that ought to count a little bit. Yeah. Uh, or not just on who's the biggest rock star, who's got the most money, or who, uh, who's got the biggest legacy. I mean, one of the candidates I worked, as you know, in the Clinton administration, I feel like I'm running against two machines. <laughs> one is enough. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't mind because I am going, and I said, as you said, I'm going county to county, I'm doing house parties, I do events, uh, grassroots. Uh, some of my best events have been with myself alone. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, okay, what would I consider successful? Uh, Beating somebody. I mean, I've got consultants that I pay thousands to tell me this. But I don't have too many consultants, as you can see. I'm not a typical candidate, although I did wear my best suit. Uh, look, uh, this is a caucus that not only is important within the delegate selection here in Iowa, but it's, it's the boom that sends you to the next primaries. So I'm not predicting a victory here. I'm predicting, you know, you have to be one of the top contenders. And I just don't want to get more into that right now because uh, it raises expectations, it lowers expectations. That's something, and, 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 and although it's a very good question, you know, the pundits in Washington, the the, the smarty pants set, they've already kind of decided that there's three candidates. But you know, when I go to living rooms in Iowa, I sense that you're shopping around. You know, you haven't decided yet. And so I am counting on you to keep your powder dry. Just to look at the process, scrutinize us. Let us come out with our best plans. Uh, talk to us, see, you know, if we got passion, if we care. Just in there for, for other reasons. One of your rivals, John Edwards, has made electability a selling point, saying that he's the Democrat who can appeal to the voters in the rural communities, swing congressional districts, and even states like Colorado that will have tough fights.
rights for U.S. sentencing. What would you have? What do you say about this statement? Well, I, I know he's a very strong candidate, but we have, in the Democratic Party, we have seemed to be nominating candidates that maybe are very strong in the East Coast and the Far West Coast. But in between America, the Iowas, the New Mexicos, the Ohios, Florida, we don't do very well. Uh, I believe I'm elected. And you can look at polls already with uh, Republican candidates. I'm a governor. This country has looked at governors, although this not last week's a good example. But <laughs> <laughs> we're viewed as managers. We're viewed as balancing budgets. You know, we've insured every child in the pie. We, we, we deal with issues that you care about every day. The Congress, you know, they get up there and they go and they give big speeches, but what's come out of the Congress lately? Most of the most effective policy in America has come out of the states. Right here in, uh, in Iowa, you're what your legislation, your governor doing, civil unions, minimum wage. I mean, those are issues that affect people's lives. Hopefully, they'll deal with health care. Uh, so I'm a governor. I believe I have the most foreign policy experience. I'm the only one that's negotiated with a foreign country, uh, most uh, lately with North Korea. They gave us six remains of our servicemen. Maybe they're going to reduce their nuclear weapons there. Uh, we'll know any day now. I'm Hispanic. Most people don't know that. Because <laughs> my point is, I'm not running as a Hispanic. I'm running as an American. But in states uh, that have large Hispanic populations, I believe that's good. Uh, when I talk about energy independence, I know how to do it. I've been an energy secretary. Uh, what else can I say? I can bring states, look, uh, the only dispute I have with the senator's perception is I can deliver Rocky Mountain states that other candidates can't. I'm from New Mexico. That's a red state. I want it. 69%, 40% of the Republicans voted for me. I don't know what they were smoking, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> and I can carry, I believe, I can carry Colorado. I can carry Nevada, Arizona. Let me just tell you this. Did John Kerry carry New Mexico, Nevada, Arizona, and Colorado, states that he lost by a few percentage points, he wouldn't have made it Ohio. Now, you know, it's best, best to get Ohio. Uh, so I believe that, that I'm elected. And the American people want somebody that they feel has foreign policy experience. They don't want any any more candidates uh, that win that had need on the job training. Look, look what we're suffering today. They want somebody I believe to, I can bring this country together. I've done it all my life as a diplomat, as, as a secretary, as a congressman, as a governor. You build coalitions. You know, you get groups like this if you're going to deal with retirement issues, you get the business community, you get students, you get churches, community groups, bringing the country together, instead of always thinking of ourselves as when well, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're independent, you're red state, blue state, we might can do that. Senate Democrats have been able to master the votes needed to move forward with cutting off the funding in Iraq. You have the luxury of not serving in the Senate right now. If you were in the U.S. Senate, what would you be doing any differently than Senator Clinton's belong? Well, um, this is what I've been doing, and there's a clear difference. And this is not being negative. You say, well, I'm for this, and other candidates are for that. So I believe very strongly you don't attack anybody personally, you don't go after uh, it in a vicious way. But if you point out differences, and here's the differences. I do believe in Congress of the United States today, the House and Senate, and I'm pleased that there's a Democratic leadership is going at the war in a very disappointing way. I'm saying that. And I served in Congress 15 years. I was a Democratic whip. Uh, so I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. This is what I do. What has the Congress been doing? They have been moving ahead with resolutions that cut funding, timetables,